Hello and welcome to the Fire Red Leaf Green World Record Commentary Version video. I'm going to be going through the entire run and trying to give as much information about the speed run and this run in particular. So let's get started. So right off the bat here, I am going to be starting a secondary timer that you can't see on stream here. And that's going to be a timer that starts when the RNG starts, which is right here, where you press OK to naming your character. At that point, RNG has started moving forward, and I need to know exactly how much it's moved forward. So right here, I'm going to open my trainer card to check my trainer ID because this effectively tells me what RNG seed that I'm on. I'm gonna enter that trainer ID into a program that tells me all of the possible squirtles on this RNG seed. And then I've filtered them out by the good ones. And uh, now I'm gonna choose one. So you can see there at the bottom, the stats have changed to this mild Squirtle. And these are the stats of the Squirtle that I'm aiming for. So um, that's why I started the secondary timer because a new Squirtle is generated every frame. So I need to press a to accept Squirtle on the frame that this Squirtle is going to appear on. So I'm going to wait here for just a second and then try to time my A press right when uh, that frame passes. So I don't know if I've gotten the right Squirtle at this point. Um, all I know is that it's the correct gender, which it's a 7 and 8 chance to be the right gender anyway. So. Um, it is not worth checking stats at any percent for sure. You can actually like right now you can go check the Squirtle stats in your Pokemon menu and see if you got the right one or not, but that wastes like five seconds. So it's better to just go into the fight because you can usually reset pretty early. For example, if you have the wrong HP value, I could just reset right away. Um, and so now I'm starting to gain information about the Squirtle. Okay. It's at least speed tied with Bulbasaur. It's done the correct amount of damage to Bulbasaur. It's taken the correct amount of damage from Bulbasaur. Um, and so as long as it still could be the correct Squirtle, I'm going to continue the fight. And then I'll get the final news when I actually level up here. I'm going to check the stats. I'm looking for, I believe, 13, 12, 11 at the bottom three. 13, 13, 11. Uh, and so now I know that I have the right Squirtle because I'm looking at a list of all the Squirtles that are anywhere close to this one. And it, there's just no chance it could be anything else. 13 special attacks already pretty rare because you have to have a plus special attack nature. So, uh, so now we can start the run. This is a, uh, I get maybe 15% of Squirtles that I that I actually aim for. So, yeah. Um, so I'm gonna kill this for experience. You always want to kill a Rattata, uh, level two or three Rattata. If you see it, you need to. Kill one thing to get Water Gun after Brock, which is mandatory for Route 3. Um, it also helps with Brock's gym. But there are some interesting mechanics about the grass in Gen 3. So for the first, I believe in normal grass, it's six. Yeah, six tiles. You have a 1% chance to get an encounter, and after you get an encounter, you have another 6 tiles of 1%. Each tile is 1% to generate an encounter instead of roughly 10%. Um, and then there's another mechanic where the more grass tiles you've walked through without getting an encounter, the more likely it is you get an encounter. Each step gets a little bit more likely to get an encounter, and so what that means is that unlike Gen 1, where you could get zero encounters or nine encounters because it's all, you know, all the tiles are equally random. 
In this game, you are going to get encounters that are much closer to the to the middle, to the, the median average encounters. So um, it's actually a nice mechanic for speedrunning because it means that most runs are going to be a little closer. But uh, it also means that getting like crazy stuff like zero encounter forest is like insanely good. But I have personally never seen a zero encounter forest. I have seen one though uh, multiple times. Um, and due to that encounter mechanic, uh, the TAS is actually forced to get encounters. The tool assisted speed run where you literally get perfect luck. Um, there's a point where the task actually is forced to get an encounter because because of that increasing encounter mechanic, you're effectively uh, guaranteed to get an encounter at some point. Um, but yeah, now that I already have my experience, I'm going to be heading up Route 1. And um, what's interesting is that you need two HM slaves in this speed run, and you can get them both on Route 1 because Ratata learns Cut and Pidgey learns Fly, and those are the only HMs you need because you teach the other ones to Blastoise, Surf, and Strength. Um, wow, this was so far. Oh, I actually just got... That's right. Okay. Yeah, I actually just get zero encounters there, so that's pretty unlikely to get zero encounters even through one pass, um, which is fine because you can catch your slaves later, but... Um, it makes your Brock time look like crazy good when it's only like pretty good. Fun fact, this Weedle can be shiny. But yeah, I mean, overall that was, uh, a pretty fast Squirtle. I believe it was around frame 42 or 4300, which is like the first two or 300 frames, which is like the first five seconds. I'll, I'll wait up to like 20 plus seconds for a Squirtle. And then I got uh, a three shot on the encounter and no encounters on the way up. So this is, this is a solid little run right here. Um, honestly, like the Brock split is really important because there's so much variance in it. So this is forest. Uh, the forest actually is unique in that it has seven encounter tiles where you get the 1% 1% uh, encounter chance. So you'll almost never get an encounter by that trainer there, for example. And we obviously need that antidote for Weedle. Getting poisoned is like a pretty big part of this run because it allows you to manipulate a very specific HP for Brock's gym, which is important because of something we haven't talked about, which is Squirtle's ability, which, wow, that was like super far without getting an encounter. Oh my goodness. That is not normal. I, that, I think that is literally the furthest tile I've ever made it to in this game, actually uh, tied for. So now we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight. So I actually probably should not have gone right there because the turn frame is worth an encounter. I actually did risk a 10% encounter by walking right into the trainer there. But you have to do that anyway after the fight. So yeah, it was just, I basically just wasted a turn frame for no reason there with the same number of encounterable tiles. But it was less, it would have been less of a streak though. So, I know that probably doesn't make sense, but anyway, uh, there's like situations where you want to go straight up into the trainer because like your streak of encounters is really hot. So you want to go like right into the trainer so that you could reset your encounter streak because if you fight the trainer, then your encounter streak, um, or rather encounter less streak goes back down to zero. But I think that was fine. Um, so we do get poisoned here, which is actually good. If you get poisoned really early, you lose a bunch of time because like the poison damage ticking down over and over again is like really slow, right? But in general, getting poisoned here like any time is good if you don't die, because you're just gonna let yourself fall to the optimal HP for Torrent, which is Squirtle's ability. Um, you're probably familiar with that if you watch the Sapphire commentary or you know played the games or whatever. But 
If you are at equal to or less than one third of your max HP, your water moves deal 50% more damage. And that is an incredibly important mechanic for this speed run. So that was actually a 1% encounter on that, that tile right there. The first three steps after a trainer. So now these are all one, two, three, four, five, six. Those are all 1% encounters as well. So uh, two encounter forest is very, very good. Like four is probably average. Maybe like 3.9 or something. So I'm letting this poison tick to get to the optimal HP for Brock's gym. And the optimal HP for Brock's gym is like the lowest HP possible where you still tank all of the moves, basically. Um, you can't see it there because of the stupid alert, but uh, I was at 6 HP, 6 out of 26. So this is actually an optional, uh, optional trainer, but he gives an enormous amount of experience for a three turn fight. And it is a little risky, but it's like overwhelmingly worth it. You get water gun early by doing this. You get bite for Misty slash level 20 for Misty by doing this. Um, it's like not close at all, whether this is worth fighting or not. Um, and you see that a lot in, uh, in like Sapphire, etc., where like Torn is so good that it just makes these early fights super fast and getting a big chunk of experience early on is just so value, especially with like learning a new move sooner. It just has a huge impact. Whereas you would never fight a trainer late game for experience because, you know, you would level up one Pokemon sooner, maybe. So, um, that Sancher has three moves. One of them scratch. If he scratches you, you're generally fucked. But yeah, um, there's nothing you can do about it. It's also a range to two shot, but it's likely. So this Geodude's guaranteed and... What's interesting here is that um, I've set it up to where I'll have Torrent for Geodude. You don't need Torrent for Onyx um, on the first turn because he's faster than you and he'll hit you. And Onyx has three moves. One of them's Rock Tomb. Rock Tomb does 10 to 12 damage. And he actually uses Rock Tomb, which is crazy slash amazing. And then we get the range on Onyx. That is a 9 and 16 range plus the crit chance. But what's interesting is that the way that damage rolls work in Gen 3, or, or I, I guess the AI of the computer, is that the only reason he went for Rock Tomb there is because he checked to see if it would kill me. Like, yeah, he knows my stats and stuff. And the check came back, yes, it's going to kill. So what that means is that when he checked to see if it would do 10 to 12, it did 12 on his check which is only a 1 in 16 chance because the highest damage roll is only a 1 in 16 chance always because of um, Pokemon always rounding down. So he checked to see if it would do 10 to 12, uh, or rather 12. It did 12. And then the actual damage roll did the median value, which is 11, uh, which is you know way more likely that he actually rolls 11. So what that means is that I took the most possible damage without dying and then got the, the damage range. So now I'm at, I have as much Torrent as possible for Route 3, and Torrent is mandatory for Route 3. Nice, okay, so that was a mistake. There, just, you know, we're gonna start adding these up. I tried to buy three Awakenings super fast by holding up, and then I missed it, so I had to rebuy them, and I was like, okay, like super out of practice, let's not get too fancy. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I mean, twelve sub-13 Brock is like crazy. I've only had like five of those ever, even with uh, no slaves caught on that split. So this run's looking really good. Um, so basically, having Torrent for Route 3 turns everything from a two-shot into a one-shot. And they have String Shot, which makes you slower than everything uh, left in the fight. They have Harden, which has like the stat-up animation, which is really, really slow. Uh... It's just no good. You have to have Torrent for Route 3 for record attempts, or at least very close to it, so you can get hit once into Torrent. But we have Torrent for, for 10,000 years, so we're, we're pretty happy about it on this run. Um, so I guess something else I haven't talked about is uh, stats. 
So, I mean, you can see all my IVs down here at the uh, at the bottom, but um, you might be wondering about like natures and stuff. So there's three runnable natures for this run, mild, modest, and rash. Uh, they're all plus special attack. Modest is minus attack. Uh, mild is minus defense and rash is minus special defense and special defense is definitely the least important stat in this run so that means that rash is generally the best squirtle but it's not like having special defense is worthless like having very good special defense definitely has benefits and and this run definitely benefited from that in some places and i'll try to point that out um, and defense is actually a very important stat uh there's a lot of places where your defense is a big deal and i'll I'll try to point that out, but Misty's being so loud with that bone. Um, other than that, uh, for a Squirtle to be runnable, it needs to have at least 30 special attack. So you only run 30 and 31 and 31 is better. Uh, 24 speed is the minimum I run. 24 is a big deal. Uh, attack is a pretty important stat, but it's, you know, we did... Jesus, Misty. <laughs> Sorry. Um, and uh, surprisingly, HP is actually a very important stat, too. Because it increases the range where you can be in Torrent for the most part. Okay. So we go for our Fly Slave here because it is 70% to encounter a Flyer here because of Spiro and Pidgey. Uh, you just attack once, and this HP was 78% to get in the ball, so pretty likely. And what's interesting about this is that Pidgey was 50-50 to use Sand Attack or Tackle, and whether he used Sand Attack or Tackle actually changed which trainer I'm going to fight here. Because you fight one optional trainer in Mount Moon depending on a number of factors. Your defense, your speed, um, your current HP. So I'm going to take eight steps here. Because the first eight steps of Mount Moon are 1% encounters, and your repel doesn't last if you don't take those eight steps. And I would have fought this bug catcher to the right here if the Pidgey hit me, because that meant that I would have had Torrent for the entirety of Mount Moon, including after I leveled up and evolved into War Turtle. Um, but I'm actually two damage short of having Torrent for the entirety of Mount Moon, but I actually won't have Torrent for level 16 or level 17 because of that. So what that means is that instead of fighting the Bug Catcher who never does damage to me, I'm going to fight this trainer who has two Rattatas that know Quick Attack and a Zubat that does always two damage to you, which is uh, why I actually fought this guy um, because I would have I would have stalled on the Zubat if I didn't get Quick Attack. But what that means is that I'm actually one in three to die here. Um, Rattata's Tail Whip, Tackle, Quick Attack, it uses it randomly. And if he Quick Attack there, I was dead. And, um, but thankfully we didn't die. Uh, and then we go for Zubat, which I believe is an 11 and 16 range. And now we have Amazing HP and Torrent for the rest of Mount Moon. So this was definitely worth it. And it was doubly worth it because... Uh, Josh, actually, that's the name of the trainer I just fought. Josh has three Pokemon that all give speed EVs. And in this run in particular, with 27 speed, uh, those three speed EVs allow me to be faster than a Pikachu in Surge's Gym and speed tied with Surge's Voltorb. And uh, in particular, the Pikachu has Thunder Wave and Double Team, and so he can really screw you. So this is our first spinner. And oh, I actually get an extra turn frame here because I had like a weird repel that I'm not used to. That was silly. Um, so you saw me run up until a certain tile, and then I started walking. The reason I did that is because I... 
force him to look left by running up until that tile and then I start walking so that he's still walking that tile because if I ran further he would start looking up and then I couldn't pass him and then I open the start menu because the spinner can only spin every so often and if you open the pause menu quickly enough after walking to that second tile if he hasn't spun by the time you got there he can't spin by the time you pass and he can and, and pausing time uh uh, pausing pauses that timer. So pausing allows you to assess the situation quickly. Like, okay, has he spun? Am I safe to pass? And then you um, and then you just go after you have confirmed that that's the case. Uh, so this fight's actually super annoying. Uh, Pound is generally very good there because he has Disable, which disables Water Gun, Poison Gas, which is super bad, um, and Harden, which is a little slow. So he actually pound crits us, and then we get tackle from Voltorb, and I missed the 9 and 16 range. So now I was speed tied with Voltorb, but he also had to use tackle here. But it would have done 2 damage and killed me. So I lost the speed tie, but he didn't get the 1 and 3 to use tackle. And then this coughing is also a 14 and 16 range. So if I miss this, I was dead because he has smog and tackle. Um, and now I'm in a super annoying situation where I, I still need to catch a cut slave, but the majority of Rattatas that you find will do exactly five damage with quick attack. And what that means is that if I try to catch it and he quick attacks, then I'll be in a situation where I can't weaken him. And this is another mistake here. I thought my repel was going to wear out because it normally does, but I started doing a new movement in Mount Moon that saves two steps. And forgot because I'm out of practice and an idiot. And so I just risked an encounter and took an extra step for an and turn frame for no reason. So that was really bad and probably deserved to be punished. Um, so now we're going to catch a cut slave. And the reason we catch a cut slave here is because it's the highest chance to get one before you need it. And there are 60% of the encounters here can learn cut. Sanchu and Rattata at 35 and 25% respectively. So we get a level 10 Rattata, and this does have quick attack. Uh, I opted not to heal. Honestly, I maybe should have, because dying is slow anyway. It's still faster than healing. But this run was really, really solid at this point. So... I don't know how I feel about this decision. It wasn't particularly likely to die, but it was likely enough that I, I probably should have taken the extra menu to potion once, since I was going to have to potion anyway. Um, but dying doesn't matter because we're going to rare candy to revive, and we rare candy at this point anyway. Um, and this is probably the majority of the reason. Uh, there, there's a lot of benefits from, from this experience route. But that's this is pretty much why you fight an optional trainer in Mount Moon. Because now I'm level 18, like almost exactly. So I can candy to 19 for bite and 20. Um, and level 20 actually makes the damage ranges on Misty like way better. Like way better. This fight would be absolute cancer if you weren't level 20. And it's already pretty stupid. No, it's faster to potion outside of battle, in most cases. But we actually need to heal to full here. You generally only use two potions, but we were so low HP that we actually had to use three for this. So this fight's pretty stupid. Uh, you have Staryu and Starmie. They both outspeed you. And Staryu is a 93% chance to two-shot. Starmie, it's, I believe, a 41% chance to two-shot. But if you miss the range, she heals, so you can't miss it. Uh, and Staryu will always Water Pulse at least once, um, sometimes twice. And it's 20% to Confuse, and I actually get Confused here. Which is really stupid, because um, since my defense, because I'm mild, my defense is low... And my special defense is higher than it normally is. 
Starmie thinks Swift does more damage than Water Pulse, and so it's going to be using Swift, which means I pretty much can't get confused on Starmie. So I get a bad roll here on Bite, so I switch to Tackle, because you, d you don't want to hit her into heal range. You just want to kill. Um, you can actually miss the range again after she heals, so it's, uh, this, is, this is definitely faster on average. And you Tackle instead of Water Gun, because it saves not very effective text, which is like over a second in this game. So it's faster on average to risk the miss than it is to get not very effective text. And now we are on a good run. 2501 Misty is excellent. Uh, any 24 is like amazing. 2530 is probably more like a standard good run. So, so I have to potion for rival. Annoyingly, uh, I have to potion to an HP that's more likely to get sand attack, but there's nothing you can do there. You have to heal because you can't get... Uh, it's not worth getting super potions. And the reason I do the potion and the water pulse here in two separate menus is because you're opening the TM case with the select button because it's your registered button. Um, and if you don't do that, you have to scroll over one to TM case, open the TM case, teach the TM, close the TM case, and scroll back to the menu. So that means it's always faster to use select to open the TM case, which means you always have to do two menus, which means that, uh, yeah, you just do it like that. So I'm going to lead Bite here, hoping to flinch Pidgeotto because he has sand attack, and that's what you really don't want to see. We get quick attack, pretty happy about it, but then we get quick attack again, and this is super annoying because now I have to heal on Bulbasaur. Vine Whip does 15 to 18 damage on this special defense so i have to potion once because i'm just dead unless i flinch and you don't want to risk a great run on that so we get vine whip for 17 down to 18 hp so now i'm only one in 16 to die to vine whip so it's fine and now we're like flinch 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 and hit 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 <laughs> because if you miss this you're getting sleep powdered and then you have to heal off the sleep powder then he vine whips you're on like one hp you have to hit a mega kick for your life and then you also have to heal again for ratata because he's got quick attack so that was an insanely clutch flinch. Uh, saved, you know, potentially 25, 30 seconds or something. That was a huge deal. Whew, man, I've been talking a lot. <laughs> You don't potion to full health for rival because number one, you are extremely likely to get sand attack if you're above 70% HP. And number two, you actually want to be at an HP where it's possible for you to set up torrent for the next split because there are several fights where three fights on the next split where it's good to have torrent. Torrent doesn't actually matter for this section at all. You can save a few inputs slash text letters because every letter of text that prints loses a uh, frame. So you can use Water Gun instead of Water Pulse because you're in Torrent in some cases, but it really doesn't matter. You never run out of Water Pulse. So... Uh, and that's why we're using Bite here. It is worth it to go one down to Bite. Actually, <laughs> you would run out of Water Pulses if you used all your Water Pulses on this fight. Um, and you didn't have enough Water Guns. But it is faster to go down one and save all the letters from Water Gun four times versus Bite four times. But this is pretty much the freest section of the run. Nothing can really go wrong here, except there's an Oddish on this fight you have to kick, but it doesn't kill if you miss, so. Um, and then you actually, you only have one extra kick for the segment, so if you miss two, you lose an additional turn by biting something twice that would have died to kick. So that is quite annoying. Uh, so I guess that can go wrong overall in this section, but. And as you can see, I haven't even used a water move yet. The torrent is, is fairly pointless for this section, but being at an HP where you can get torrent later is, is valuable. And basically no risk. 
So this is another little benefit of the XP route where you candy for Misty, which has like been standard forever. But you this this Sandshrew does not die at level 22; it only dies at level 23. Um, it's, you get to save the super effective text by biting it. Just small stuff. And then I got to save one input there from being in Torrent because I didn't have to go up and right to Water Pulse since I was in Torrent because that doesn't die to Water Gun unless you're in Torrent. Silly stuff. Uh, I got this run yesterday. I haven't submitted it to speedrun.com yet. And even if I did, it probably wouldn't have been verified yet. But uh, this run is the new world record by 22 seconds. Spoiler alert, right? Oh, and by the way, since somebody is totally going to ask, I'm eating a bagel. Oh, wait, you guys can't see me. Okay, it's fine. <laughs> right. I can see me because I'm looking at the video. Nice. Right, B. Oh, thank you. Um... You, you can't see the old me, is what I mean. The record me. Yeah, Misty's going ham on that bone. So this is interesting. Poke guy came up with this little movement where you like turn up there to get the elixir. You can't pick it up frame perfectly if you do that, but it makes it to where you just run left instead of down left after the pickup. And that means it's basically impossible to hit the trainer, whereas before it was like kind of monka. I love that movement. It's like so much nicer can be a little tricky to do a turn frame. Oh, so this is annoying. This guy actually turned left here. I forgot to mention this. this guy turned left. So normally I would just go there and he would only be one in 16 to hit me. But because he turned left right before I started the fight, um, the setup is ruined because I can't just go because then he'll see me. So I actually have to wait for him to turn and then I don't even know how likely he is to hit you. If you're fast, probably one in 16. One in four to turn your direction because he can pick the direction he's already facing and then one in four to actually turn um and that was the reason that i let the trainer walk one tile and see me there because it sets up that spinner pass because remember i told you before that a spinner can only spin every so often at like set frames they have a chance to spin and so if you are on that tile and take the run and then walk and then run as fast as possible then he's only one in 16 to see you No, I didn't do any offline attempts. I did one practice run, like, <laughs> at Christmas, basically, because I thought I might stream, but then it didn't wind up happening. So I was, like, super out of practice for this. Am I satisfied? Hell no. This run sucks. Or rather, this run is a pretty good time, but it wound up being not a great... Not, not well executed. I will definitely come back to this run, assuming it's beaten. So this fight is the one really annoying fight. I have three kicks and I have to hit two oddishes. I actually do miss one there, but I wind up getting hit for seven damage there, which is actually very good. I wanted to take between, oh God, I forget how much it was. I think it was between three and eight damage, something like that, or three and nine damage to be at an HP where I tank Bulbasaur, but I'm still in uh, Ivysaur. 
but I'm still in Torrent for the next split. So taking damage there was actually good. Why does every speedrunner say this run sucks? Uh, well, you'll see. Uh, I'm not just saying that. This run is actually bad. No, it's not because it could be better. It's because it's bad. <laughs> Listen to my words. But yeah, overall, pretty good. I missed one kick and had to heal once on Rival. Otherwise, this was solid. So, and you can see I'm pretty ahead of record here. 42 point, yeah, 42 seconds. Uh, this is a really solid run. 35-11, Bill's great. Fantastic, in fact. Again, this is not me being salty or like a perfectionist or like it's not perfect. This run sucks. And you will see. So I'm out of Mega Kicks, that's why you pick up the Aether. You need more Mega Kicks for this section. And you don't want to heal to full HP at all. Uh, and a Pokemon Center is slower anyway, so. Good. Okay, so this Drowsy is a bit stupid. You have to kick it, it doesn't die to anything else. I promise, it doesn't die to bite. Everyone, no one ever believes me. But it doesn't die to bite, I promise. Or Torrent Water Pulse. They're both very unlikely damage ranges. Like 3 and 16, 4 and 16 or something. Uh, and he has Hypnosis too. So, And you really don't want to take damage since my HP is like perfect right now. So definitely really wanted to hit that kick. This run went south when I ran into an extra trainer in a way that I never imagined doing. Uh, Arbot guy in Sylphco. I took an extra step in the grass there, which means that I actually had a basically a 10% chance to get an encounter on the last tile. So that was another mistake. So this is one of the fights you want to have Torrent for. That Raticate dies only to Torrent Water Pulse, otherwise you have to Mega Kick. And... Obviously, you don't want to kick because, A, your HP is good, so if you miss and you get Hyper Fang, then you're dead to Quick Attack, you're dead to Crit, and you're dead to Miss again. Well, I guess you would Water Pulse because you're in Torrent then. But, uh... Also, you can miss enough kicks to where you run out on the split. So... Yeah. Definitely want to be in Torrent for that if possible. But it's not the, the end of the world if you're not. I believe the extra trainer wound up costing about 22 seconds. But I'm not 100% sure I haven't gone back and timed it. Because it did save a bit of time in a way. And it was only a one trainer poke. So it's kind of weird to do only a rare candy for this um, fight. You can actually rare candy after this fight, but um, this makes the bite plus kick range better on Ivysaur. It makes your defenses better to tank certain moves. Um, but yeah, mostly it's it's just better to to get to make the bite kick range on Ivysaur better. So my HP is 19, which is pretty much perfect because Vine Whip does 17 to 20. Um, I have him a slight chance to die to Vine Whip at 19, I believe, like 12% or so. Uh, but 
I get quick attack again, so that was another bad quick attack. So now I'm just dead. So if I I would have to bite and then pray for flinch. So instead, you just super potion. Get vine whip. He's always gonna vine whip because it kills. Now you go for the bite, but the problem is that now you're over half. So you're um you can either get well you can actually get pretty much any move he has there, but you're possible to get leech seed, and I do get leech seed, but it misses, which is a ten percent chance. So that was super clutch. But then we miss the kick, and we get put to sleep again, and we want to actually die. So we're just praying for Vine Whip here, because if he Leech Seeds, it's fucking over. The problem with Leech Seed is that Leech Seed heals him on the turn that he uses it, which puts him out of range to die to Mega Kick. Which means that you just have to switch out. Uh, this Raticate also dies to Torrent Water Pulse, but we weren't in Torrent. So this fight was super, super bad, um, but if Leech Seed hit, it would have been way worse. So, you know. Pretty happy at this point, honestly. Like, you know, whatever, not dead. Dude, switching out takes... Switch out, and then... He would have sleep powdered, so then I would have had to attack in and then die, and then switch back out. Fucking 30 seconds. 25, 30. It's really slow. So this boat heal is both for PP and HP. You want to be full HP for Surge. You need Mega Kicks. You need your Water Pulses and stuff. I mean, you're actually like really low on all of your PP except Bite at this point. So taking the boat heal there, you do that every run no matter what. There's no situation you wouldn't take it in. Like at all. Not even close. Loses 23 seconds. Nice. I'm glad my estimate was close. I'm assuming you included... The bag minute saving time, though. So we use select to open the TM case there. We registered it in Mount Moon. It's faster to do it like that, as I mentioned before. And now for one of the worst parts of this run. Surge is probably the worst section of the run is this section. Because you have trash cans and Surge. Surge is the worst fight in, the, in this game. And... Arguably the worst fight in Pokemon speedrunning as far as like how likely it is to go correctly. How you're like super likely to die, and even if you don't, you can lose a ton of time. But we get first try first can, which is like super fucking good. And first try second can. And that is why this run is so good, pretty much. This run had a really fucking sick start, and then it gets perfect cans. And like now that boat rival fight didn't even happen. Because I <laughs> I just saved an enormous amount of time over standard cans. Like, I mean, just just get the perfect cans, bro. And this is the Pikachu that I talked about earlier that I got extra speed EVs by fighting a particular trainer that was good for my situation. And now that Pikachu can't Thunder Wave me or double team before I attack because I'm faster instead of speed tied. Um, and then Surge's Elite is a Voltorb that I'm now speed tied with instead of being slower than. Okay, so don't don't blink for this one because this one is this is crazy. And it actually uh, totally justifies the Misty fight. So I lose the speed tie, but he screeches. Pretty standard stuff. 13 and 16 range to kill, but even if you don't kill, he just heals, and then you go for it again, so it doesn't really matter. Um, Pikachu doesn't have any moves that can hit you and always dies, so then he just dies. And then the entire fight is Raichu. Obviously, Raichu with Shockwave fucks you up, and he's also faster than you. Um, his other move is Double Team, so then you have to hit through. Um, he's very likely to Double Team here. I believe he's... 20% to shockwave. He shockwaves on turn one, which is super bad because now I'm dead. But I get the confuse. So if that didn't happen, then I would have had to switch out, die, switch out to my other slave, heal my war turtle, come back in, and then hit a kick through double team or a water pulse through double team after getting Torrent, 
and then not get crit. So that confuse saved an enormous amount of time and risk in that situation. Um, I do get static, but it's whatever. It doesn't matter. It's actually wound up being triggering for a reason I'll explain later, but... So now remember earlier we talked about how the first six tiles of a normal route's grass are only 1% each to give an encounter. So we're going to be using that mechanic. We already did it on the way down, but we're going to do it correctly this time. And we get one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's definitely not worth getting a repel for, uh, for those sections because of that mechanic. Whoa, <laughs> I forgot about that. I've never hit that tile before. I was trying to see how many months someone subbed for. Lost focus for a second. Just another stupid mistake. All right, so this is kind of minor, but I have to remember that my cursor is on save here because like a lot of times it'll be on Pokedex because you reset the game because you didn't get the first try can. Just have to remember that. And then parry heal in this menu because you have to register the bike anyway. That was fast. That was a good menu. All right, so this split is Omega Cancer. It is Mega Kick City. It is Pokemon that have status move city. It is damage range city. Uh, this split sucks. So the only move you have that kills Oddish is Mega Kick. And this fight has two Oddishes, two Bell Sprouts, so two Bites, two Mega Kicks. Also, your Mega Kick PP is like a huge issue for this section because you want to have at least two kicks for Lavender Rival. Um, so I used one kick on Surge, two kicks on this fight, and now I have two kicks left. Um, so I'm in kind of a weird situation here because this run's very good, and the next fight I have to kick has two Pokemon that you need to kick. But you don't want to use your Elixir yet. Because you want to get down to zero kicks and then elixir after that, so you have all five kicks worth, right? Um, however, because I am at this like mid HP value where I would kind of like to take damage to get into torrent for the next split, I actually opt to elixir after the fight because even if I miss the kick, I can just bite bite and then I'll be happy with the damage that I took anyway and then I'll have enough kicks for what I want to use them for so I believe that Venonat is a 7 and 16 range with 31 special attacks so that was good because he does have supersonic uh, if you're in Torn he always dies obviously I think I messed this up it's kind of a weird lag there. All right, Rock Tunnel time. So for me, Rock Tunnel is uh, something that I've practiced a lot. And the way that I approach Rock Tunnel is that basically I know what the layout looks like around me, like pretty much everywhere. And so even if I mess up the movement that I'm intending to do, I know right where I am so I can fix it. And I take a path that makes it like as easy as possible to have good visual cues. And that's how I navigate pretty much perfectly. I know how many tiles things are from each other. Like I know how many tiles that wall is. I know how many tiles this wall is. Um. I use how how much sand pit 
I've gone through to time going left there and then getting into the alcove to talk to the guy. That's like one of the hardest parts of this. Um, yeah, so I know. <laughs> I mean, I'm using super effective bite on slowpoke and they both die, which like probably looks normal. But actually, the first slowpoke's only one in four to die to bite, and the second slowpoke's only one in 16 to die to bite. But I crit. So. I got the 7 to 16 Vinonat range and both slow pokes, and I hit both kicks on the first fight. And now this is the worst fight in the whole, arguably the whole split. Uh, definitely the whole split. That Oddish is only 11 and 16 to die to Mega Kick because my attack's pretty bad. It's like the only place attack matters when it's like average like this. And this Wobblesaur always dies, and we just hit Kick Kick and got the range. So this was like a huge fucking deal for this run because I only had exactly two kicks. Um, and that decision wound up mattering. And you see, I know I am two tiles away from the wall right here. Like, I, I, I know that because I went one up. So I would be one tile if I was one lower. So go two there. And then I actually pass this up, which I have, like, never done before. But, uh, tiny little mistake. And I knew that, I, like, okay, I need to go one left, and then I need to go one, one left. Uh, so I'm at a mid HP value and I'm not worried about dying and I would like to take damage. I'm going to use bite on the Sonics. It's 11 and or sorry, 13 and 16 to kill, but he doesn't have any moves that are like super bad. Um, and super effective text is super slow in this game. So it's worth it to bite that Onyx. Now you might be wondering why I don't bite this Onyx because it's the same Onyx, right? Well, no, that Onyx actually has a plus special defense nature, so it doesn't die. <laughs> so you have to water gun it. Then, nice, that was a good save. I don't normally do that, like going right into the ladder there. I normally go up into it, but. Yeah, we're pretty much good now. Um, there's just one more mega kick to hit on the split. And then, I mean, if you're noticing, my rock tunnel movement has been really solid, and I've hit every single damage range and every single kick. So this split is currently insane. Um, like, this is the best, or it winds up being the best rock tunnel split ever from any run. I'm all, I mean, I can't imagine. Like, the, the only thing that could have gone better this split is I could have made, like, the not two seconds of mistakes that I made in movement, and, I, and not having to heal the static para. from Raichu from the last split, which is like not much. Okay, so you see me get off the bike there, and so I have to do something really scary here. So there's a spinner right here that I have to get past, but it's in the dark. So you have to run up to a specific tile on a specific column of tiles, run up to that tile to force him to look down, quickly get on the bike, to pass him before he can spin because biking doesn't force him to look in a direction. Then I'm gonna I'm gonna bike up to the ladder and then I'm gonna get off the bike because by resetting the audio track, it significantly lowers the amount of loading time between the two screens. Um, so it's worth it to get off on and off the bike. So on the bike, off the bike, on the ladder, and then get back on the bike, but I actually uh, walk one tile and then bonk. But overall, especially for not being practiced, I'm like very happy with this rock tunnel. Especially because I um, I literally learned that strat where you do the audio transition thing like the day I did this. So um, overall, pretty good. Pretty happy with this. And then this is the last kick. And all those Oddishes have Stun Spore Sleep Powder Poison powder. So 
You definitely don't want to miss. There's like a huge amount of time to lose there. And then I'm going to use the second sand tile pit here, right there at the top, the sand, sand pit tile, to line me up with the exit. So this was effectively a perfect split, which like never happens ever. I mean, this was like, let's see, my old gold was, my old gold was 1052 and I considered that to be like extremely good. And this winds up being a 1041. So if I didn't have to heal Para, that would have been a 1030x, which would be like unbeatable. But this is effectively unbeatable. Like world records, rock tunnel split, and PB's rock tunnel split are super, super good. And I saved 13 seconds on both. So yeah, 54 rock tunnel is amazing. This run is like super sick at this point. I got this run yesterday. Um, so I'm actually going to attempt to do the same audio transition thing here where I get off the bike and then run up the stairs here, but I actually go one tile too far. Uh, I mean, it saves like almost nothing less than half a second, but did mess that up. I only recently started doing that. Okay, so because we're not in Torrent, uh, again, we have to kick the Stratocate because it doesn't die to Water Pulse. And we do finally miss a kick. We did miss our share of kicks this run, but uh, overall, very good. And then we get Scary Face, which is super annoying. Hyper Fang, but not in the Torrent, but we hit the second kick. So we have exactly two kicks left, which is the exact number that I need to do the Mega Kick Strat for Lavender Rival. So Elixiring Late actually very much saved me this run. And I ultimately decided to do it um, because I was okay with taking damage and I knew that I was going to have to use an extra kick here because I was most likely not going to be in tournament. get the black glasses here. Black glasses are a held item that increase the power of dark moves. And uh, see, so, I mean, it's just for bite, but the, the, you get a bunch of small benefits from having the black glasses equipped, but they wouldn't be worth getting if it wasn't for Lorelei. Um, Lorelei is obviously a struggle for Blastoise because he doesn't learn moves that can can easily deal with them. So you're just like buffing your special a million times and then biting them all to death. Uh, and the black glasses uh, work out to where you basically save a turn of X specialing. And that turn winds up mattering a lot sometimes because of... Uh, how close your HP is to tanking a lot of the time and uh, how many turns hail takes. It, it winds up like making a huge difference. But the other benefits are really nice too, generally like saving super effective text. You pick up the Moonstone there because you literally have to, to move past that section. You must pick up the Moonstone. So this Sandshrew is a 14 and 16 range to die to bite. Um, but it's not worth equipping the Black Glasses to bite him because it's an extra menu to do that. Uh, you can actually bite 
both sand trues, and they're neither of them are damage ranges if you equip the black glasses there. But it puts your cursor in a worse position because you have to scroll back up to escape rope, and it's slow to do an extra menu for it. And since the first sand true is a really good range anyway, um, you can just go for that. The reason the second sand true is uh, worse range is because he's got a plus special defense nature, so it's only seven and sixteen to kill, I believe. Uh, so you actually can bite this Sanctuary sometimes if you're very close to Torn and don't mind taking damage. But he does have Sand Attack, so you don't want to do it in, in most cases. So we just pull some. So this Arbok is 10 and 16 to die to Water Pulse in Torrent, but I'm not in Torrent, so um, I just bite going for Flinch because he's got Poison Sting, which can poison, and Glare, which can paralyze, which is obviously really bad. But we get Leer, which is good. Um, so yeah. Not bad. Unfortunately, uh, I did not have Torrent for any of this. Which makes the next fight a little scary. Because instead of a three or instead of a two shot Kangaskhan has a three shot and he has Mega Punch and he can fuck you up. Especially when you're mild like this, I believe. Uh I believe I was very favored to die to two Mega Punches here. And since you take three turns to kill, he can hit you twice. But he's got random AI. Even if you're dead, he won't use the kill move. So Onyx, Onyx and Rhyhorn always die. Just water gun them, lol. But, uh... The Kanga is is pretty scary here. See, I'm at 54 HP and Mega Punch does 25 to 30, I believe, on this defense. So I'm favored to die to two. So we get Fake out there, which is actually really, really bad because we just lost a turn and we're still not in Torrent. Um, but thankfully I don't get Mega Punch on that turn, or this turn, you just get Bite. So yeah, not a great split. Uh, could have definitely saved more time there by being in Torrent and not getting Fake Out, but not bad. Doesn't, you never lose too much time there. But, so now we are doing the shop. There's two different shops you do here, and it depends on which Lavender Rival strat you're doing. You can either do the X Special and Torrent strat or the uh, Mega Kick strat. And we're going to be doing the Mega Kick strat because it's much more consistent. But you have to have enough Mega Kicks to do it, and you also have, enough, have to have a reasonable HP to do it. And you see I paused there for like almost... I don't know, it was like probably close to two seconds because I'm like, uh, what the fuck am I buying? Because I haven't played this game in forever. But we clean it up. Um, and so now I'm thinking, okay, what HP do I want to be at? Because this whole section that's coming up is like HP management and it starts right now. HP and torrent management. Because I need to decide what HP I'm going to heal to. I can either stay at 33 uh, but I'm generally taking 32 damage, so that's kind of Munka because any 1 in 16 or any crit fucks me. Nice two steps walked. It's hard to get on the bike sometimes. Um, I can go to 43 with the Orenberry, uh, which would be fine, but you really want to save the Orenberry, and um, it's slow to use. Or I can go to 53 with the Potion. Stupid fucking NPC, dude. But I I I quickly do uh, some some calculations if you want to call it that. Um, but we'll we'll just watch this menu first before I finish explaining this. 
because this is depressing. <laughs> so I need two potions, so I go up, and then I want potions to be lower in my inventory, closer to the stuff I'm actually going to be using, so I swap it down here above escape ropes, use a super repel, equip the black glasses since I'm right in the menu, and then I try to toss the moonstone here, but I go to equip it, because I'm an idiot, and then I quickly go to guard spec, open the bag again, trying to go to the Pokemon menu, and uh, yeah, that was really, really bad. Don't do it like that. Uh, so what's nice about this fight is that you need to set up three X items, but Pidgeotto always does the same amount of... Okay, not always, but is very likely to do the same amount of damage, eight, no matter what your stats are. So I can pretty confidently say I'm going to take 24 damage here. And I realize that if I heal to 53 then I will wind up with 29 HP and I'll be gaining, uh, I believe, 11 HP by the time I get to Koga, which is where I need to have Torrent for from now until Koga and ideally beyond. Uh, and so that worked out perfectly for me to have 40 out of 120 for Koga. Uh, I actually wind up taking 25 damage here because I got crit and sand attack, which is like a weird combination that wound up being basically the same. So that leaves me at 39 out of 120, which is torrent for Koga. Uh, sorry, it's fine. But what what's important to note here, and one of the reasons that... Uh, oh, by the way, X Accuracy makes Mega Kick 99%. 1% um, chance to miss. So that's why and it's fine. Uh... What's important to note about being mild and why it's kind of bad for this run, and it's been bad in a number of places this run, but the way the Koga fight works is you need to be in Torrent for that fight, but you also need to tank Weezing Sludge in order to get the, a safe fight, because Weezing's only 41% to die to Surf, and if he'll always Sludge if it kills you. So... That means there's a small window of HP where you are safe and also in torrent. So this run, I'm not I don't have my notes with damage ranges open right now, but I'm I believe that Sludge was doing 31 to 37 damage. And it's okay to be at the highest range because he's only one in 16 to do 37. So what that means is that since my max HP is going to be 120 for Koga, my safe range, the HP that I want to be at, is 37 to 40. I'm going to open the menu here to freeze the spinner. You can always get past them this way. Um, and that's a pretty small range of HP, right? And that the reason that is is because you're mild. If you were rash with this defense, or actually one defense point higher, it would do like 33 max. So your good HP would be 33 to 40, which is a way bigger range and way easier to set up. But we do get good luck here and get like pretty much the perfect HP value um, since I decided to potion, since I realized that would work out well. But yeah, I mean, this... this Pretty much this whole section is just being as high, or rather as low as torrent of as possible, but also tanking the various attacks that um, are a risk for you. And that takes a lot of planning ahead and knowing exactly how much HP you're going to level up for and being able to divide by three, <laughs> which sometimes is a struggle when you're doing this, I swear. Sludge Poison is a death no matter what. There's no HP where you're in Torrent, but also tank Sludge plus Poison. Yes, I have. I have absolutely run out of potions to manage my HP. Because sometimes you'll have to use an extra potion or two on Misty if you get confused and hurt yourself. Or... Um, just various other things because you need potions all the way into the elite four because of how important having very specific values where you tank, but you're also in torrent is this Marowak, for example, does not die. If you're not in torrent, the Golbat on the next fight doesn't die. If you're not in torrent, you have to, uh, 
you have to mega kick the drowsy, and I think it dies to bite. Um, but you'll you, you'll run out of bites if you don't have torrent for this section. Uh, you have to have torrent for Koga. You, if you're doing the torrent strat for Lavender Ivy, you have to have torrent for that to fight too. Torrent is just absolutely mandatory for this section. You have to have it. So. But you also have to not die to Koga. <laughs> there is another strat for Koga where you're super potion in the next special, but um, it's generally very slow. Yeah, for that reason, you do buy as many potions as you comfortably can. You do need to buy status healing items, too. You have to buy awakenings and antidotes. It's just way too likely to get put to sleep by either Bulbasaur or Ivysaur. And there's other things, too. Or multiple times, like we did this run. What was going through my mind at this point? Um, I was just trying to focus, dude. I knew that I was a little rusty and I just wanted to I wanted to focus on not doing anything catastrophically stupid and I I did do that. I I I, I made a, a random stupid physical error, execution error that like I've never seen before and you know just fat fingered it basically later. But like I didn't make any like strategy mistakes in this run so like i'm happy with my decision making this run at least except bruno but that was a very close call and i was very tilted from lorelei <laughs> where i also made a mistake i actually made a just a um a straight up mistake on lorelei the but but yeah Um, oh, yeah, I should definitely mention. So that Rattata and Raticate in this fight, they both have Quick Attack. And if exactly one of them Quick Attacked, I would not have been able to heal to an HP that was Torrent. But also Tanked Sludge. If both Quick Attacked, it was fine. If neither Quick Attacked, it was amazing. If one Quick Attacked, I was fucked. And they're both 1 and 4. <clears throat> so there is an interesting set of spinners coming up. There's a bunch of bikers that are all in like a double row. And you have to pass all of them. They all have a range of one, which means I can only see if, you, if you're right next to them. But we're going to abuse the mechanic that we abused before, where spinners can only spin on certain frames, or rather they have a chance to spin on very certain frames, like Frame 16, frame 32, frame 48. It's not exactly that, but it's similar to that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bike up to one and then pause. And that allows me to ascertain his new direction while freezing the timer that he continues to spin on. And then I'll pass him either from above or on the right, depending on if he spun or not, and bike up to the second biker and then slightly delay to line up the cycle. You have to slightly delay or he can spin right when you leave the pause menu. And you see there how how the biker spun but in a direction that I could still pass him on. Also super random, you have to hold down here. It's not like Gen 1, you actually have to hold down to go faster for this part. Pretty silly. No kappa. Yeah, it feels bad mopping. I believe it's like uh, eight frames, 12 frames, something like that, but yeah.
I mean, you can save a minute on my Lorelei split. My Lorelei split is fucking horrible. Pick out that Forester. You do always need that. Like, you pretty much use it in the same exact place every single run. Think, yep. <laughs> bonk there. So silly. Just could not... Could not line it up. It's like so easy to not bonk there because you have two good tiles to walk to, but just uh, just a baka. Honestly, all things considered, this run has looked cleaner than I remembered it looking up until this point. This this was this was good, especially for how out of practice I was. And this was right about maybe maybe ten minutes ago, where my stomach starts like really hurting. Like, I was in a uh, pretty, pretty reasonable amount of pain at this point. No excuses, etc. But, you know, just thought I'd throw it out there. I was not in top condition mentally or physically. So we're going to, we need to teach Surf here, but we also need to get past the spinner. So we're going to freeze him by opening the menu. I pass up Surf there? Like, what? It's one down, bro. How can you pass Surf up? I don't know what the fuck I was thinking. I, I had stomach things, I guess. There, because I had never made that mistake. Like, what an idiot. <laughs> Thanks, Rockwing. You got my back. Yeah, I should have just known that it was over from this point. Yeah, okay, so this fight is absolutely cancer uh, because if you don't have Torrent, you have to X special or Mega Kick if you have any. So you have to have Torrent for this fight. Nothing dies without it, and everything dies with it. Well, maybe Cadaver dies, but whatever. And now for what is pretty much the definitely the worst fight remaining. Another spinner we have to freeze. Uh, pretty much the worst fight remaining. Definitely the worst fight remaining. I imagine saying that twice. Uh, fight until the Elite Four. Koga. This fight is really stupid because there's just no good way to deal with it. Because X Special plus Surf doesn't kill Muck. If it did, this fight would be so free. So free, but it doesn't die. So you have to surf coughing because it has smoke screen, which means that you have to... You can't set up on the coughing. I, th I actually think it has self-destruct too. <laughs> so you can't do that. Um, so you have, just have to attack in Muck. And this is a two-shot, and he's got double team or minimize. But we actually crit, which is super fucking sexy. Doesn't get better than that. And now you see the HP I was talking about before, 39 out of 120, which is just barely Torrent. And it is not Torrent for the next level. 42 out of 122, I think. It could be a plus 2 or 4. Um, so now this Weezing, we're actually going to Bite. And we get Bite Crit, which doesn't matter at all. And Smoke Screen, which is rare, he actually usually sludges there. And then if you get poisoned, you it's over. You'd lose. <laughs> the run's dead. But uh, we hit past the smoke screen. So the reason that I used Bite there was because Surf is 41% to kill. But if you miss the range, you win. But he heals. So it's slow. So Bite has a 30% chance to flinch. And then you win. Surf has a 41% chance to kill. And then you win, but bite is faster since you never get the heal. Faster on average. Obviously, just one-shotting is better. But flinch is really fast, too. And the idea is that you are 78% to win if you bite and 81% to win if you surf. So, in my opinion, it's better to go for the faster on average play, assuming that you don't care if you take damage. Because what's important here is that I'm currently speed tied with Blaine's Rapidash, 
and I could pick up a Carbos to be faster than the Rapidash. So if I bite, miss the range, he sledges, and now I'm at like 12 HP or whatever. Uh, or I guess more like 5 HP. Then I can just pick up the Carbos, and I don't have to heal for Blaine. So I don't actually care if I take the hit there, because I can decide if I'm going to be faster than Blaine or not. What I'm going to do instead is skip the Carbos, X speed to be faster than the Rapidash, and then the turn that I spent X speeding, I'll take damage from his lead Growlithe, which will put me in Torrent so I can kill the Arcanine and be faster than the Rapidash. So being able to choose whether I was faster than Blaine here is what ultimately uh, led me to biting rather than surfing on the Weezing. A little scary here, save a turn frame by going down, but if you go down two, then it's over. That's the Carbos right there. And then this guy is actually a spinner that can see you, or a walker that can see you, but he moves left, so I just get to take the quick path to the to the statue. And now this is like the dumbest thing ever. Like I, I can't even imagine how this happened. But like I try to go right, doesn't work. Try to go right again, doesn't work. Didn't actually lose very much time, but it just looks so fucking stupid. I'm not even like nervous either at this point. I'm just I'm just focused, honestly. But I don't know. Hands are starting to hurt. Haven't played the game in forever. Feels bad, man. Stomach hurts. So, <laughs> I played this so safe. So, you either press A or B for yes or no on this. And I was mashing. I took an extra step there, lol. I always do that. I swear this gym tile floor is so stupid. Am I happy enough with this run? Fuck no. Um, I'm, I'm mashing the text box before and after the answer text box with only one button. Because I'm like, I am not fucking up these questions like Pokeguy did. <laughs> Obviously, it's faster to mash with two buttons. So, interesting bit here, because I'm mild... Uh, the Growlithe is going to use Takedown, not Fire Blast, because Takedown does more damage. And that means I can't get burned. So, burn is dead, by the way. Like, actually dead. So, X speed to be faster than Rapidash. Take the damage. Yes, crit would have killed me. But that was just the best way to handle that situation. Then you just win from here. And now for the biggest mistake you could possibly make in a run, or rather potential mistake. After this fight, you're gonna walk outside the gym. You cannot escape rip out of out of this gym. And Bill will meet you outside. And he's gonna say, Hey sweetie, you wanna come to the islands with me? And if you say yes, as I have done many moons ago, not only is your run dead, you're like, I mean, can you even get on the leaderboard? I guess there's some pretty bad runs, but you lose like 10 or 15 minutes because you have to actually do some of the like island side quests to get back. You literally cannot get out. You can't fly back or anything. So you have to press no here. And it's like so simple, right? But I literally mashed like most of this with, I looked down at my controller, made sure I was pressing B, 
press B, and then I mash the next text box with B just to be sure. Smooth little fly there. All my flies were perfect this run. It's actually pretty hard to do those. It's like pretty, uh, pretty sensitive. Little menu. Not like red runners where you just hold the button. <laughs> no, it's actually there's actually a technique to it in red that's a little tricky with the timing, but. So, we're going to fight this guy, get level 42, and then, this girl, and then do a menu because this is the optimal time to rare candy without wasting experience. And what's interesting here is that a lot of times you'll be forced or rather incentivized to potion for Erica because it makes your HP line up pretty well for the coming fights. And... Uh, and it allows you to tank Mega Drain on Erica because uh, if you miss Blizzard, then you're dead, <laughs> which is obviously something you're not like thrilled about in this situation. Nice, open the Pokemon menu there. Nice, more mistakes. Uh, but because I'm mild and therefore am not rash. Uh, I actually have enough special defense to nearly guarantee that I will tank a Mega Drain, assuming I miss Blizzard, so I didn't have to potion there. Uh, you have to have Torrent for Eric, or you have to hit two Blizzards, and then the fight goes Surf, Bite, Blizzard, if you do have Torrent. Uh, if you do miss the blizzard, then she generally is going to stun Spore because you're not in range to die to the Mega Drain. So that means you then parrot. You could get uh, stun Spore missed, but that's actually never happened to me. Uh, <laughs> but then you parry heal the stun Spore, then she uh, Giga Drains, and then you have to hit the blizzard or you're dead. Uh, and round two, you're a higher level for this fight, so you can actually just surf, and it's a uh, damage range. But you got a blizzard. And we hit it, which is really good, because it's super slow to miss that. All right, boys. Time for uh, time for my shame. Just fly from Celadon to Celadon. This honestly, this is like not even as bad as it looks. One one trainer fights are uh, really fast in this game, but I mean, obviously, it's really stupid. Literally lost less time than missing Blizzard on Erica would have. So there's a walker and a spinner you have to get past here. Generally, you're going to bag manip this walker, but I actually react to the fact that he moves. And I believe that was a safe pass. Looking at it again, it's actually kind of monka. So we turn there and then super potion up. Uh, you need to be at an HP where three wing attacks puts you in torrent, but that you don't die to quick attack. Max Elixir, walk one tile down so he doesn't look at you, run away from the tile, and then bag manip him again, run past him, and somehow I went down. I mean, it fucking sucks, bro. 
my my fat, stupid, aging, hurting fingers press down, and then we hit this guy. Now, this looks super bad, but it actually wound up um, because I don't have to wait for him to spin and do another bag manip after I come out of the teleporter here and I can just go. This only lost about 20 seconds. Maybe, maybe 20, 22, 23. Unfortunately, I don't think the XP mattered like at all. Um, and you do have one extra surf on this PP, right? I mean, you actually have infinite extra surfs because you can just water pulse extra stuff, but water pulse is slightly slower. But you do have one free extra surf that you don't use. So, spec spec. Ack. And we took uh, pretty standard damage there for mild. I mean, there's not like a huge range of damage you can take. So now we're in torrent, but tank quick attack from Pidgeot. So now we just have to hit a, a X accuracy uh, makes Blizzard 93%. If you miss Blizzard on Venusaur, you lose <laughs> the run server. So it's a little scary. Definitely has happened to me. Uh, this Gyarados is 3.5% to kill you because he uses Bite and Dragon Rage at 50-50 because he's a dumbass. So you miss Blizzard and then also have to get Dragon Rage, but I have died to that too. But yeah, fight's free from there. At this point in the run, you know, I hit the extra trainer... And I knew it didn't lose that much, but obviously I'm, like, pretty upset about it. <laughs> and I'm, I'm, I'm kind of trying to ground myself back, like, okay, this is... If, if you were on this pace and you didn't hit that extra trainer, like, the same exact pace currently without hitting the trainer, you would still be happy with this run. So just get your fucking shit together and focus up. And, 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 you know, stay mentally present in this run. It's not over. So, that was difficult. Especially with the stomach pain, but... Uh, this Cubone is actually 13 and 16 to die to bite, but I decided the Water Pulse because... I didn't want to take the damage, assuming I missed the range. Since I was uh, on the lower side with bad defense. Uh, so this fight, Torrent is mandatory, but, I mean, you pretty much are always going to have Torrent if you've set it up properly. The only thing about this fight that's stupid is that Kangaskhan has Fake Out again, which can make you not tank Sabrina's move from the damage that you took. And also, Kangaskhan is a 13 and 16 damage range, which means that if you miss and get Mega Punch, and you're mild and have lower the lower side HP like I do, then you are dead. But he does have random AI, so that's not likely to happen at all. I think he still has Tail Whip at this point. Maybe he has Comet Punch by now. I don't know. I only found out this was 13. I thought this was 15 and 16, but it's actually 13 and 16. It's a very sad part of the route. But, I mean, there's just no way it's worth X-Specialing anywhere. Because the Rhyhorn damage is bad, and he can also Poison Sting Poison you. There's just nothing you can do. You just got to go for it. Now, Sabrina time. Have I ever messed these teleporters up before? I don't think so. 
can actually save a turn frame here by going up. The guy can't see you. Since you're already facing up, you don't get a turn frame since you uh, you only get turn frames when you're not in movement. Already. And then again, by going like down into that one, you can go down to the next teleporter without turning. Just minor stuff. I mix it up. You with the last possible optional? That is not true at all. You forgot Victory Road, my man. There's plenty of optionals to hit there. Like, a lot, actually. It's actually probably the most likely place to hit an optional. That isn't a spinner, for sure. So, you have to act speed on Venomoth, because if you have, like, amazing speed, then you can Carbos to be faster than Sabrina, and you don't have to do this, which is nice, because uh, Venomoth always side beams, and if it confuses you, you have to full restore, and if you full restore, you're not in Torn anymore, and if you're not in Torn anymore, then uh, you have to act special to kill Alakazam and Venomoth, and you don't have Torn for Giovanni's gem, which means that you don't have enough Surfs, because Water Pulse doesn't kill everything. Uh, this actually happened to Poke Guy on one of his good runs. Or was that actually his record? Maybe? No, it, c it couldn't have been. Because I would have saved more time. Actually, no, I wouldn't have right because I hit the optional. I lost 13, so maybe it was. It's the most free gem if you're in Torrent, this gem, yeah. I have no idea, dude. I don't remember. But anyway, yeah. Uh, that that actually did happen to someone. That's what I'm saying. Maybe it would be better to just use more water pulse early. I wonder if you could save enough surfs by using more pulses early. To make it to where if you got side beamed you'd still be okay. Not sure. Can maybe look into doing that in the future, because it is very minor the difference between surf and water pulse. Like one input over and a couple letters a few times. But yeah, I mean this whole gym just dies in one hit, and nothing can outspeed you or anything. Uh, unless you were to be running less than 21 speed, and then Dugtrio would either be a speed tie or faster than you, and then you would have to heal, and you could get crit or whatever. So it, it is mandatory at IMO, or like not worth the hassle, for sure, to, to run at least 21 speed. And then I only run 24 or higher. I think running 25 or higher might be correct. But... Yeah. Might do that if I ever come come back, which I will come back to this if someone beats my time. Dude, Misty is laying with the bone resting on her mouth. She fucking loves that bone, man. <laughs> when I scooted my chair up, I knocked her bone away from her mouth and then she moved it back onto the bone. <laughs> How's the stomach? Um, it started off pretty bad this stream, but I actually feel uh, pretty okay right now. No, I'm, I'll pet Misty at the end. Don't let me forget. Because I will 100% forget.
so if you remember, we picked up the full restore in Safari Zone, and that's not like a safety thing. The reason you pick that up is because you are almost always in Torrent. Or you, I mean, you want to be in Torrent for this section. But you always want to be full HP for the next fight. And you only buy five super potions, so you'd have to use three super potions there, which means that, like, you would all, you would run out of super potions really often. Like, you don't have that, like, very much extra money at all, or really no, no extra money in this run. So you pick up that full restore because you're always super low here, and you always want to be full HP after this fight. Um, and you're near the bottom of your inventory anyway so just works out to where it's worth it oh and i lost time i actually lost uh the bulk of the time there because I got an extra level up from normal. Because I fought that Arbok trainer. You normally get level 50 on the next, on this fight. So I, so this Lorelei split was even worse than it looked. Since I had already gotten that level up. But yeah. I don't know how much it changed the Pidgeot range, if at all. But I mean, she wound up hitting me so low. I think I got crit, right? No, I don't get crit. Um, wound up, he wound up hitting me so low that I couldn't tank Razor Leaf from Venusaur anyway, so it didn't it didn't even matter. Yeah, dude, twenty six. He fucks you up if you're mild. God. This is another one of those ninety three percent blizzards. If you miss this, you're dead. I mean, he could miss Razor Leaf. Is that, I think that actually happened to me one time. Me and this fight don't get along. I have died. I literally died to this fight in the old Fire Red Round 3 world record. I died to this fight like three times in a row on pace. And it's like not likely to die to this fight at all. I actually rerouted the money to be able to afford an X accuracy for this fight. Because it's like technically not even like really worth X accuracy for this fight. Because the money, it makes your money stretched a little thin if you if you buy that X accuracy. But yeah, <laughs> so this is a slightly interesting situation. Rain Dance can be like a little annoying because it plays the rain text every turn. Um, but it actually allowed me to skip the X speed here because you would normally X speed on Growlithe and then he would agility and then you would go and be faster than Alkazam because Alkazam has Disable, Calm Mind, um, which makes Surf not kill. So you need to be faster. And a lot of times you'll be in an HP where Psychic just kills you. But because he rain danced and because I'm mild, I actually tanked Psychic and I don't care if he calm minds because the rain makes the calm mind uh, not matter. I mean, I made a few fucking minor mini mistakes this run, and obviously I hit the extra trainer, but, like, overall, I'm actually happier with this than I thought I was, which is the opposite of how I normally feel. I think I take extra step here or something. I'm, I'm, like, suffering pretty hard. My stomach is, like, super bad now. I think the stress of the run made it a lot worse. I mean, the run is garbage, unfortunately, but I'm going to take an extra step here. Yeah, I remember that. Okay, so now remember the mechanic where eight tiles, because it's a cave, eight tiles of encounterless. 
I actually bonk the wall here, which consumes one of the tiles because I get an extra turn frame. And then I get an encounter on the last tile. Your repel doesn't last long enough unless you do this. Um, so I got like Omega punished for bonking the rock there. So you bonk the rock and then you get a turn frame when you turn up and that consumes an extra encounterless tile. I think, I think that's how it works. Uh, if not, I just got very unlucky. <laughs> it, it may just be tile count. And I just got a 1% encounter there on the last tile. I'm not actually sure about that. So either way, it sucks to get an extra encounter there. Um, but that being said, I wind up fucking up the movement here and your repel literally, your, your repel is two tiles short, even if you do everything perfectly and I don't get an encounter on the way out. So I deserved one anyway. So even if that was a 1% encounter, it was deserved. So yeah. Uh, would have been a, yeah, right there is where we, uh, fuck it up. It feels super bad, man. But, you know. It's like the one thing I didn't practice at all. So. Um, okay, so without that, so it would have been like a 201.15 without either of those. Which sucks because... My lore life split was split was so bad that this could have been a two o o, but we got a. Well, I'll, I won't spoil the elite for for those of you who haven't seen it. <laughs> that was Munka there. Like, okay, I'm not fucking into the strainer, bro. <laughs> And then you see the repel doesn't last here. So I could have easily gotten an encounter here. Like, for sure. So, it's like, whatever. I deserved it anyway. Even if that was a 1% encounter tile. I don't, I don't think sub 2 is... Like, realistic is just hard to say, dude. If sub 2 is realistic. Like, it is definitely possible. But I, I, I hesitate to say realistic. Because it is... Like, don't get me wrong. This run had some unfortunate shit happen, but this is a hard time to beat. It's, uh, like, Mega Kick is too stupid. Mega Kick, Brock, Surge, E4, Koga are too stupid. Like, you just, it's, this, this is a hard time to beat, for sure. Yeah, I missed, uh, I think, three kicks this run, but uh, overall, I mean, the Ivy, missing kick on Ivysaur was, like, actually super, super bad. But, yeah. Alright, so this fight's really stupid because you're super likely to get hail, but if you don't get hail, it saves 10,000 years. Get crit on turn one, that's already terrible because, in general, you are, like, right on the cusp of being able to tank one or two body slams, depending on how, like, the turns go. And you really, god, you really want to be able to tank one body slam. It's so important to be able to do that, and really, two is amazing. But uh, I actually do make a mistake here, uh, if you watch out for this, but it's really stupid that I was put into a situation where I, like, could make this mistake. You have to set up four specs here, because you're using Bite. But yeah, um... So I should have healed on this turn, is the mistake. Um, I was thinking that I could get hail if I healed on that turn. 
but the turns lined up to where I was actually fine to have healed on, on that turn. And the reason why I should have is because I am 50-50 to get Surf or Ice Beam from Dugong there because he already had Safeguard up and he already had Hail up, so he has to use one of those two moves. And that means that I'm only 5% to get Frozen there. But what I do instead is I heal on... I, uh, I, 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 and a lot of times you can heal on Jinx too because Jinx Ice Punch is only 10% to get Frozen. But I was so high HP and mild that I was pretty sure Ice Punch wouldn't kill. And I wound up being right. It was a 1 in 16 chance to kill me. So now I heal on Lapras. But Lapras, I'm again high enough HP where Lapras is guaranteed to use Body Slam. So I'm risking a 30% chance to get paralyzed here for no reason. And we get Omega Punish because we get Crit Paralyzed. And then we get crit again, which means that I have to heal again on this turn. Uh, the reason I didn't heal the pair off is because I didn't want to get uh, Confuse Raid here. And then I get crit again! Which uh, didn't actually really matter, but it changed the Bruno strat that I used. Good flinch, though. Could have still gotten Confuse Raid. Probably wouldn't have from there, though. Um, so now I'm at this weird spot where I'm not used to running these, like, I only used to run 26 plus mild here, so I'm not used to this combination of stats. So I opt to do the guard spec Bruno here. There's like a lot of different things you can do on Bruno here, but the basic idea is you need to get torrent and have two X specials set up and not have your speed be lowered at that point. So that generally means three turns. So I'm thinking that three moves is three rock tombs is going to leave me in torrent. Um... But it's actually about 1 HP on average away from leaving me on good torrent, uh, I believe. And I actually get Rock Tomb Miss. So I'm like, oh god, dude, this is going funky. And then Earthquake, which is... is I, I actually don't know the chance between Rock Tomb and Earthquake here. Um, if anyone knows like what the chance is, that would be great. But uh, then I got Rock Tomb Crit on that turn, which is just perfect. This is like the opposite of how my Bruno fights normally. I always get fucking so stupid misses and crits here but this one wound up perfectly because guard spec to block the street speed drop spec spec crit on the second turn i wouldn't have had to i wouldn't have taken enough damage to be in torrent without that crit on that turn so i would have had to stall and x spec again and then if he tombed it would have been fine and then i could have used bite on both onyxes and it would have lost like no time but if he earthquaked then i would have had to super potion on the hitmontran after that and that would have been slow But yeah, you just win from here. Um, and so now we have like a Koga-esque situation where you need to be at an HP where you tank Shadow Punch, but also you're in Torrent. Because you need Torrent... Uh, but also you need to not die. <laughs> so uh, the ra the range of HP that's good for that is much more forgiving because you have a much higher max HP at this point, which means there's a much larger range of values that count as torrent. So there's like a, you know, 20-ish HP range that works. And that's one of the reasons Ornberry is good because healing 10 here sometimes is very important. So Gengar is either going to double team. Well, she's generally going to double team here. If she Shadow Punches, it's really bad because then you have to heal. And then on this turn, you either get Shadow Punch or Double Team. If she Shadow Punches, you're 75% to win, 25% to die. If she Double Teams, you're 60% to hit through here, and then you get a rebuy if you miss. Crit Shadow Punch is dead, 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 yeah. Um, you need to set up plus one, plus one, speed spec, and then um, assuming you're in Torrent, you just win. But this fight is a huge troll. I've lost so many runs to just chain missing here.
so now, oh, I guess I forgot to mention um, the reason that I deposit my slaves is that you get to heal Blastoise in the PC by putting him in and then taking him out. Um, and then you don't get a cutscene in the Hall of Fame for each of your Pokemon in your party that way. And the slaves are worthless since you don't have revives and revives are slow and you don't have enough X items to back up the deaths anyway. So it's also better to not have slaves for Bruno because sometimes uh, you get in a situation where Onyx will roar you if you have slaves, but he can't do that if you have no other Pokemon. So just full restore for Lance. Uh, this fight sucks if you're mild sometimes. But there's... Uh, so so we're going to do the strat that Pulse, Pulse Effects came up with. Where you... X special. Bite, bite, blizz. Instead of spec, ack. Or sorry. Bite, spec, ack, blizz, blizz. Um, this is an 85% damage range, but you get an extra chance to flinch, which is like a huge deal because one turn can make all the difference on this fight. So I wind up getting another bite here, and I'm at 80, 83, and you see me pause here. Three, four, I lost four seconds there because I was like, oh shit. I am not used to running 20 mild. I don't know exactly how much damage Hyper Beam is going to do. And knowing if he's going to Hyper Beam on that turn or not, it's super fucking important. Because if he... If I was in an HP where I tanked Hyper Beam, he wouldn't use it. And then if he used Bite on that turn, I wouldn't have had to heal for Gyarados or Aerodactyl in this situation. Uh, actually, Mockwing, uh, this did not change my level ups for Agatha at all. The Arbok. I was just being stupid. Teehee. Um, okay, so I believe we looked that uh, Aerodactyl was 62 to 75 Hyper Beam here. And if you remember, he won't go for Hyper Beam unless he thinks it kills. So he has to both... He, ha he basically has to hit the range twice on me. He has to check to see if it'll kill. The answer comes back yes, and then actually kill me with it on a second roll. So I was very unlikely to die here to that. I could have died to crit, though, which would have been fucking catastrophic. But, uh... But, yeah. We, uh, we were fine. Mild didn't fuck us too hard. If we were rash and got the same fight... Um, with bite on the last turn, this would have been a lot faster. But uh, mild, mild didn't screw us too hard, thanks to the uh, well, the pulse strat didn't actually wind up mattering, but could have got an extra flinch. And now for some champion fun times. Very important to be full HP for this fight because similar to the way that the Pidgeotto's worked earlier in the run, where we wanted to be low HP. Because we didn't want him to be incentivized to use Sand Attack. We now want to be high HP because we want him to Sand Attack every single turn. Because now we're equipped with Guard Spec and we don't want to take the damage. Especially because we're mild. We get fucked up by Wing Attack. Um, as long as you're above 70% HP, he's very favored to use Sand Attack. Um, but we missed the first one. And am I actually above 70% here? I don't know. What is it? 120, 128 divided by 164. Yeah, 78%. So yeah, it's still fine. So you get sand attacks here. And then we need to set up one speed and three specs. Um, and so we get an interesting situation here. So because we were mild, we actually got Torrent on the turn that we set up to plus three. So what that means is that we can go for Bite Surf, since we're in Torrent, on Venusaur instead of Accuracy Blizzard, which has a 3% chance to kill you because you miss and then also get Solar Beam. And I get Crit Flinch on Venusaur, which is like, what? <laughs> I, I don't know. That is like the weirdest shit. Because you normally don't even bite there. You have to get that exact setup to bite. So it's like probably the first time I've ever seen that. 
super weird. Yeah, I mean... What's sad about this, though, is that you do have to hit a 70% Blizzard on Gyarados now. Which is, like, very important to hit because you have to heal a second. For, for every Blizzard you miss, you basically have to heal again. Uh, unless he hurts himself in confusion after the first one or whatever. But, yeah. No, Alakazam dies to plus three without Torrent. You don't need Torrent for anything else except Venusaur. Oh, you know what? I actually... I actually could have surfed Gyarados there. This was a mistake. Because he dies to plus three Torrent Surf from there. And then I heal on our... Uh, Heal on our canine. Instead. And we didn't have to risk the blizzard. That was silly. I don't know why I didn't... What an idiot. And then we... <laughs> we get crit by extreme speed. So many crits in the C4. Yeah, I don't know why I didn't... Like, that's like part of the strat. Uh, I'll, sometimes you'll level out a torrent there, though. But, yeah, definitely should have surfed there. Because Gyarados doesn't have a priority move and he would have died. Wow. So we misplayed Lorelei, Bruno, and Champ. <laughs> and wasted four seconds on Lance deciding what the correct play was. Shit's rough, bro. But, you know. The Bruno misplay was arguable. It actually may have been the correct play. I just don't know the, how likely Rock Tomb versus Earthquake is. Mm, yeah, I would say about a minute is reasonable. But, I mean, that would be like an insanely good run. Like, really, really, really. Re 2 0 in this game is so fucking good. Uh, I beat Poke Guy's time. So there you have it. 201.49. Uh, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed this commentary. Uh, I'm pretty happy with this one, honestly. I uh, There's a couple of things I wanted to say that I couldn't really get in there uh, seamlessly. But for not preparing for this at all, being out of practice and stuff, I, I'm, I'm happy with how this commentary went. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, you and YouTube. Uh, if anyone has any questions that are good, like relevant to the run or whatever, before I turn it off, uh, I'll, I'll answer something. No, second day of streaming, not third day of streaming world record. What run is next? Uh, not sure. We'll talk about that in a little while, though. Which of your gold splits has the most potential for improvement? Now your rock tunnel is pretty much perfect, and there must be a few splits with Lotham Golds. Dude, so many of my splits, my sum of best in this game is really insane. I think the I think the split you can save the most time on is actually champ with a YOLO champ without healing. <laughs> Cause I, I even like most of my splits even have like good YOLOs. Okay. I'm going to end this commentary video now. So thank you so much for watching everyone. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think in the comments uh, of this one. If you enjoyed it, if there's something you like more or less something you'd like to see, because these commentary videos are kind of far and in between. Um, but yeah, I will, uh, I will pet Misty now and then we'll end the, in the video. with her bone. <laughs> All right, thanks for watching everyone.